calling Millennium Office Supplies. If you would like to place an order, please press 1. Your call has been placed in a queue. A customer service operator will be with you shortly. Gina speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'd like to order some stationery, please. And who am I speaking to? John Carter. Right. Can I just confirm your account number and the name of your company, John? Sure. The account number is 692411. 692411. Right. And you're from Rainbow Computers? Uh, no. The company is Rainbow Communications. Oh, OK. I'll just fix that on the system. Communications. And what would you like to order, John? Uh, envelopes. We need a box of A4, that is, normal size envelopes. White, yellow or manila? Um, we'll have the plain white, please. Uh, but the ones with the little windows. OK. One box, A4, white. Just the one box, was it? Um, on second thoughts, make that two boxes. We go through heaps of envelopes. Um, as a matter of interest, are they made from recycled paper? No, you can't get white recycled paper. The recycled ones are grey, and they're more expensive, actually. Right, we'll stick to white, then. Something else, John? Yes, we need some coloured photocopy paper. What colours do you have? We've got purple, light blue, blue, light green, whatever you want, pretty much. There are 500 sheets to the pack. Right, let's see. Um, we're going to need a lot of blue paper for our new price lists, so can you give us ten packs, please? Make sure it's the light blue, though. Ten packs of the light blue. Anything else that we can help you with? Um, uh, let me think. What else do we need? Uh, oh, I'm sure there was something else. Pens, paper clips, fax paper, computer supplies, office furniture. Yeah, ah, oh yes, we need floppy disks. Do you have those nice coloured ones? Yes, but they're a bit more expensive than the black ones. Oh, that's all right. I'm not paying anyway. <laughs> right. Floppy disks. And what about diaries for next year? We've got them in stock already, and it's a good idea to order early. Um, no, I think we're all right for diaries. But something we do need is one of those big wall calendars. You know, one that shows the whole year at a glance. Do you stock those? We certainly do. OK, can you include a wall calendar, then, uh, with the other stuff? Um, just make sure it's got the whole year on the one side. Sure. And do you have a copy of our new catalogue? No, I don't, but could you send one? Yes, I'll pop one in with the order. You'll find it a lot easier to remember what you need if you have our catalogue in front of you next time. Yes, good idea. And um, when can you deliver this? Should be with you tomorrow morning. Can you make sure that it's not after 11.30 a.m.? Because I have to go out at 12. There's only myself here on Fridays. Fine. I'll make a note on the delivery docket that they should deliver before half past 11. Thanks very much. Thanks. Excuse me. I wonder if you'd have the time to take part in some market research. Um, what's it about? About this club and your experiences and opinions about being a member. It'll take less than five minutes. Oh, OK then, as long as it's quick. <laughs> Can I start by taking your name? It's Selina Thompson. Is that T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N? Yes. OK, great. Thanks. And what do you do for a living? Well, I'm an accountant, but I'm between jobs at the moment. I understand. But that's the job I'll put down on the form. And would you mind my asking which age group you fall into? Below 30, 31 to 50, and above? Over 50. <laughs> I think we can safely say. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. And which type of membership do you have? Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean how long... Of... No, is it a single-person membership? Oh, right, no, it's a family membership. Thanks. And 
How long have you been a member? Ooh, let me see. Uh, I was certainly here five years ago, and it was probably two to three years more than that. Mm -hmm. Shall I put down eight? Oh, I remember now. It's nine, definitely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. I've got that. And the last question in this first part is, what brought you to the club? Uh, sorry? Uh, how did you find out about the club? Did you see any ads? Well, uh, I, I did, actually. But I have to say, I wasn't really attracted to the club because of that. It was through word of mouth. So you were recommended by a friend? <laughs> actually, my doctor. Oh. I'd been suffering from high blood pressure, and he said the club was very supportive of people with that condition, so I signed up. Mm, great. Now, for the second part of the form, I want to ask a bit more about your experience of the club. Sure. Uh, how often would you say you use the club? <sighs> it varies enormously, depending on how busy I am. Mm, of course. But on average, per month? I'd say it averages out at twice a week. OK, so eight on average. Yeah, and four of those are aqua aerobics classes. That leads me to the next question. Would you say the swimming pool is the facility you make most use of? Fair to say that, yep. Right, thanks. And are there any facilities you don't use? Hmm... One area I realise I've never used is the tennis courts. Mm. And there's one simple reason for that. You don't play tennis? <laughs> Actually, I'm not bad at it. Oh. It's that I'm not happy having to pay extra for that privilege. Oh, right. I've made a note of that. Thanks. Mm. <clears throat> now, in the last section, are there any suggestions or recommendations you have for improvements to the club? Only about health and fitness? Anything at all. Well, I'd like to see more social events. Oh. It isn't just a question of getting together for games or classes, but other things, you know. Yes, yeah, sure. And another thing that I was thinking, when I had my yoga class in the gym last night, we were all sweltering in the heat, uh, was that I think they should put in, well, you know... Uh, Air conditioning. Uh, that's exactly what I mean. Mm. The rooms are really light and well-designed, but they do need proper installations. Sure. Well, I've made a note of that. Good. So, is there anything else you'd like to suggest? Uh, about quality of service, for example? Oh, everyone's very nice here. They couldn't be more friendly and helpful. Oh, but I tell you what... It's a shame the restaurant isn't open in the evening on Saturday. And Sunday as well, for that matter. Oh. So the club should... Yeah, open it later on those days. OK. Well, thank you very much. That's... <laughs>
Yes. The number is 061-439-4576. Directory inquiries, which town, please? London. What name? London University, please. University of London. The numbers 01-388-0542. Thank you. Directory inquiries, which town, please? Bristol, please. What name? I'd like the number for County Hall. County Hall. Bristol, double eight, O seven O. Directory inquiries, which town, please? Edinburgh. What name? British Airways office. British Airways. Yes, the numbers 031. Eight nine seven four five six seven. Thank you. Bye. Good morning, World Tours. My name is Jamie. How can I help you? Good morning. I want some information on self-drive tours in the USA. Could you send me a brochure? Of course. Could I have your name, please? Andrea Brown. Thank you. And your address? 24 Ardley Road. Can you spell that? A-R-D-L-E-I-G-H Road. Postcode? BH520P. Thanks. And can I have your phone number? Is a mobile all right? Fine. It's 077 86 643 091. Thank you. And can I ask you where you heard about World Tours? From a friend, or did you see an advert somewhere? No, I read about you in the newspaper. OK, I'll get the brochures in the post to you, but can I give you some information over the phone? Uh, what kinds of things do you want to do on your holiday? I'm interested in going to California with my family. I've got two children, and we want to hire a car. OK, we have a couple of self-drive tours there, visiting different places of interest in California. The first one begins in Los Angeles, and there's plenty of time to visit some of the theme parks there. Ah, oh, that's something on my children's list, so I'd want to include that. <laughs> Good. Uh, then you drive to San Francisco. From San Francisco, you can drive to Yosemite Park, where you spend a couple of nights. You can choose to stay in a lodge or on the campsite. I don't like the idea of staying in a tent. It'd be too hot. Right. And the tour ends in Las Vegas. OK. The other trip we can arrange is slightly different. It starts in San Francisco, then you drive south to Cambria. Someone told me there's a really nice castle near Cambria. Will we go near that? Hurst Castle is on that road, so you could stop there. Good. I'd like to do that. Does this trip also go into the desert? No, it continues to Santa Monica, where most people like to stop and do some shopping. We have enough of that at home, so that doesn't interest us. <laughs> OK. Well, you could go straight on to San Diego. That's good for beaches, isn't it? That's right. That's a good place to relax, and your children might like to visit the zoo before flying home. 
Uh, I don't think so. We want some time for sunbathing and swimming. So, how many days are the trips, and how much do they cost? The first one I told you about is a self-drive tour through California, which lasts 12 days and covers 2,020 kilometers. The shortest journey is 206 kilometers, and the longest is 632 kilometers. The cost is 525 pounds per person. That includes accommodation, car rental, and a flight, but no meals. Okay. And the other trip? That lasts nine days, but you spend only three days on the road. You cover about 980 kilometers altogether. So is that cheaper then? Yes, it's almost a hundred pounds cheaper. It's 429 pounds per person, which is a good deal. So that covers accommodation and car hire. What about flights? They aren't included, but these hotels offer dinner in the price. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'll be in touch when I've had a chance to look at the brochure. I'm pleased to help. Goodbye. Three one three five nine seven. Number two. Seven four three six seven eight. Number three. O one eight o eight seven six double eight. Number four. O five one nine two three o. Nine two. Number five. O four five seven six four double three two. Number six. O four one nine o four five three o eight. Number seven. O six eight nine one. Seven eight nine. Number eight. Double three nine. Two seven nine. Number nine. O four two five. Five seven eight one. Good morning, Kenton Festival Box Office. How can I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm coming to Kenton for a few days' holiday next month, and a friend told me there's a festival. She gave me this number to find out about it. That's right. The festival begins on the 16th of May and goes on till the 19th. Oh, that's great. 
I'll be there from the 15th till the 19th. So, could you tell me the programme, please? Well, on the first day, there's the opening ceremony in the town centre. People start gathering around two o'clock to get a good place to see from, and the events will start at 2.45 and finish about 5.30. OK, thanks. I'll make sure I get there early to get a good spot. The festival will be officially opened by the mayor. He'll just speak for a few minutes, welcoming everyone to the festival. All the town councillors will be there, and, of course, lots of other people. Right. Then there'll be a performance by a band. Most years we have a children's choir, but this year the local army cadets offered to perform, and they're very good. Uh-huh. After that, a community group from the town will perform a play they've written themselves. Just a short one. It's about Helen Tungate. I don't know if you've heard of her. I certainly have. She was a scientist years ago. That's right. She was born in Kenton exactly 100 years ago. So we're celebrating her centenary. I'm a biologist, so I've always been interested in her. I didn't realise she came from Kenton. Yes. Well, all that will take place in the afternoon, and later, as the sun sets, there'll be a firework display. You should go to the park to watch, as you'll get the best view from there. And the display takes place on the opposite side of the river. It's always one of the most popular events in the festival. Sounds great. And what's happening on the other days? There are several events that go on the whole time. For example, the students of the art college have produced a number of videos, all connected with relationships between children and their grandparents. That sounds interesting. It makes a change from children and parents, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Because the art college is in use for classes throughout the festival, the videos are being shown in Hansworth House. How do you spell the name? H-A-N-D-S-W-O-R-T-H. Hansworth House. It's close to the town hall. Right. Now, let me see, what else can I tell you about? Are there any displays of ballet dancing? I'm particularly interested in that, as I do it as a hobby. There isn't any ballet, I'm afraid, but there'll be a demonstration of traditional dances from all round the country. Oh, that'd be nice. Where is that being held? It's in the market in the town centre. The outdoor one, not the covered market. And it's on at two and five every afternoon of the festival, apart from the first day. Lovely. I'm interested in all kinds of dancing, so I'm sure I'll enjoy that. Mmm, I'm sure you will. And I'd really like to go to some concerts, if there are any. Yes, there are several. Three performed by professionals and one by local children. And where is it being held? It's in the library, which is in Park Street, on the 18th at 6.30 in the evening. I presume I'll need tickets for that. Yes, you can book online, or you can buy them when you arrive in Kenton, either at the festival box office, or from any shops displaying our logo in the windows. Well, I think that'll keep me busy for the whole of my stay in Kenton. Thank you so much for all your help. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you. Goodbye.